Rich Saunders. I'm pleased to have on the new Seymour softball head softball coach, uh, Samantha Rossetti's with me, takes over for Ken Pierres, who was with the program, I think, since 1980, if I recall. Long, long time, but justified. Now he gets to be able to enjoy his, his golden years. And now Coach Samantha comes in. And I appreciate you coming on, Coach. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. You know, thinking about you and I were just talking about some softball and chopping it up a little bit. Um, now you were telling me how you 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 know you started at Laurelton Hall and then you went to Shelton and such. But before we get into that, how did softball kind of grab you? How how did the game kind of pull you in? Um, I would say it's definitely it's a sport where every part of the sport is competitive. Like you have to be competitive every out, every ball hit, every ball thrown. It's just, and competition is the best part of any sport. I think winning's great, whatever, but the ability to compete and to the ability to play softball is just one of those things where it's constantly moving. It's constantly fast and you're constantly competing mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity to show off and like show your skill and show how good you are every single second that you're around the ball. When you were younger, I mean, was it one of the first sports that got you or was it something else before softball? So I was actually an Irish step dancer. And that was like my big, like, I got the taste of winning like right away. It was like my first, they call them feshes. And I knew right away that I was like, I just love to win at things. I was like, this is it. I love to win. And then oh. I started playing basketball. Basketball was team sport. I had, it was a little aggressive too much contact I think and then softball was like the next in line and and then you get better at it and it gets more fun and you see how fun it is to like see your own progress see your team progress see progress and it gets better and better so I think it was just like one at a time do you think doing the basketball stuff and the Irish step dancing kind of helped with your talents for softball when you were playing do you think it helped at all it, yeah it definitely helped in well, basketball and conditioning. And then, like, to be honest, like, Irish step dancing is technical. So it had to do with a lot of, like, learning your fundamentals, learning how to perfect everything. Mm -hmm. Knowing it's okay to mess up because sometimes you're just out there and you have no idea what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of have to, like, deal with the adversity and figure it out. And you don't win every time you go out there. So mm -hmm. that's a pretty good thing. Now, what position did you play as far as kind of coming through the ranks? Um, growing up like little league and high school, I pitched pretty much like, I'd say like 80% of the time, maybe a little higher than that. But then when I got to college, I played first base and I played first base and third base all through child ball. Okay. So as far as thinking about the Irish step dancing, and obviously I'm assuming you, you may have to fill me in on this, but as far as being good on your feet, right. I would think as a first baseman, yeah. third baseman to be able to react to the timing of which the ball is hit off the bat. You got to be quick on your feet, right? Be able to go. I feel like yeah. that would help a little bit, right? Yeah, it was all, it's all pretty much like learning how to do it. The more you're out there, the better you get. Mm -hmm. It's a fast sport, so. Yeah, just a tad, just a tad. <laughs> yeah. So as you kind of were progressing through your career, obviously through the high school ranks and then college and such, you know, because you played, you know, you were at Eastern, obviously Eastern, very well known for a lot of their sports and they're doing fantastic. I know in baseball, they won the, uh, you know, the the College World Series for mm -hmm. Division Three a couple of years ago and a great job out of them. And now their former coach is now at Yale and he's doing great things there, too. Um, yep. When did the and I asked you this before we started, but for people who may not know, how did the coaching bug kind of because I feel like the coaching bug can either bite you or it doesn't. Some people right. just like to coach. Some people are just like, you know what? I want to play and then I want to go do my second career. And then you got people like yourself who are like, I need to stay in this. This is like, th like, this is what wakes, like keeps me up and allows me to wake up in the morning, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think a lot of it had to do with like that love of competing. It was yeah. like a way to stay competitive and a way of staying involved. Mm -hmm. It was also something where like, I didn't see a lot of me like as a coach, like I didn't see a lot of people like like me, like there weren't a ton of young girls coaching at the time. So it's it was just something where like I either played for not I don't want to call them older. They weren't older, but like mm -hmm. women or men or and it was just never someone who was like the most relatable or like 
mm-hmm. someone who like resembled who I was. And I was just like, I think more girls need to be involved and like have more faces like this out there who want to compete and who want to win and who just who get it and who just want to be part of it and stay involved. So if if I'm getting it right, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it sounds like you were thinking to yourself, okay, I want to be maybe not the first because I'm sure there were others, but you want to be one of the younger, <clears throat> pardon me, coaches because that's something that's maybe that's not around for whatever reasons there are. So you want it to be an example of that to hopefully have more down the road. Is that right? Yeah, I just wanted to be something that like girls could be like, oh, it, she did it. I got it. Like I can do it too. Or like she'll help me do it. Or we can all do this together. Like I'm a big like, I'll help you. You help me. Like mm-hmm. my, I would be nowhere if that woman sitting in that office at UB never was just like, hey, do you just want to be a part of this? Like I owe her a lot for her to just look at me and be like, I'm going to bring you along. Like mm-hmm. here's your seat. Come along with me kind of thing. So like I feel like since she did that for me as she's an older not old, older woman, I can do that for other young women as well. Like, I just think it's just easy to like pick each other up and bring you along with for the ride. Talk to me about just like, cause obviously dumb question is, so how was coaching in college? Well, that's dumb because if you didn't like, you wouldn't have been doing it in the first place. I feel like right. that's such a dumb question in my opinion, but I'm going to ask you one that's kind of more morphed into as you were coaching in college, going through the ups and the downs of not just coaching, but then also too being more independent and obviously having certain things through like your life, as far as you going through the coaching ranks. Right. I mean, how was that mentally in like physically and all that, but more so the mental side, how was that for you? Well, I think like once you get into your rhythm of like playing the sport, Mm -hmm. especially like in college, you kind of just stay on that schedule if your job allows you for like the rest of your life. Like even like looking back, like I wake up, I go to work, I come home, I work out. Like it's my same time as practice every day. Like I eat dinner the same time. I make sure I have snacks packed. It's like, it's the same lifestyle. And I feel like I just liked that lifestyle so much like growing up or I got so used to it growing up that like Mm -hmm. transitioning into the coaching was easy the hard part about coaching is like the other parts where you're busy every weekend and you come home and you watch film and you don't want to talk to anybody and like stuff like that. Like you miss weddings and baby showers and all of that. That's part. That's the part that's the hardest mentally is like, yes, your friends and family are there to support you and do all that with you, but you're still got to take, sometimes it takes a back seat, especially in the college coaching realm. Like high school, it's a little easier because you're in the same town and you're not on the bus for seven hours. But like, that's the part that you have to like, use your FaceTime, call your friends, make sure your mom knows where you are kind of thing. Like, it's all those things that like, if you don't have someone there to support you, it gets really difficult. But it's possible, clearly, because people do it all the time. I was going to say, I mean, there's a lot of coaches. I mean, you know, regardless if it's high school, college, pro, I mean, obviously there's people who are sacrificing a lot of stuff. Like you said, the weddings and the birthdays and sometimes forgetting birthdays and forgetting days because everything blends into one. Right. Right. It's it's tough. Right. And I think, you know, to add to that, like coaches don't have enough to stress about, regardless if it's the head coach, the assistant coach or whatever, you know. And again, you could correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think getting away from the NIL aspect as far as college and for you to be able to come to the high school realm, it's less of now a concern, right? Because now you can focus on what high school sports is, which is making memories. And we'll get into the other stuff later, but just getting away from that, I feel like could also help too. Not to yeah. not to make it sound bad, but like, does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's more of like preparing them for what's to come yeah. and like making the most out of where they are now, like being where their feet are and being excited to be here and mm-hmm. make, like you said, like making memories and stuff they can carry on with them and prepare them for where they're going. Yeah. No, I agree with that. And I, and I forgot to say the transfer portal. Cause I could tell you, I love college sports. I yeah. have given up trying to follow where certain guys are or more so trying to remember all the names because yeah. I'm thinking one guy's here and other guys there. I mean, you know, I get home from work late tonight. I come home and I find out that the 
uh, commit at LSU for quarterback is now at Michigan. I found yeah. out three hours ago the kid from USC is is now somewhere else. He he's now going to Colorado. Like, yeah, can't keep track of this crap. I don't know how I, coaches must want to pull their hair out. They do most of the time. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not the only <laughs> one that thinks that. So yeah, no, it's crazy. To turn it a little bit now to the high school side. What attracted you? First off, how did you find out about the Seymour opening? Obviously, it's a big opening because of Ken and what he's done. Yeah. But as far as like, what made you want to come to the high school side? Well, kind of like going back to like what we were talking about before that like lifestyle of like always being on the road, being away from everybody, all this mm-hmm. stuff. I just came home and I got a job at the middle school at Seymour Middle School. Um, I've been working there for two years all and right. I got... And I saw the job posting on like the local site, like because I'm I obviously get the emails for job posting. So mm-hmm. I looked at it and I left it there for like two weeks. I was like, I'm not I'm not looking at it. Like I like <laughs> I'm not looking at it. I don't want to look at it yet. Like I don't know what I want to do. And then I'm like thinking about it and I'm like, why not? Like yeah. I have I can like why not? I'm home. The lifestyle is gonna be different. Yeah. It's not going to be that overly demanding yeah. like process every single day Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be home with my family and my friends and everybody's going to be there to help me and support me and be there and come watch games and it's going to be way more fun Mm -hmm. so I did it and my principal was actually the one that would be like hey did did you apply or like the guys that I work at Highland Golf Club in Shelton and they'd be like hey did hey did you apply to this we everybody's showing me in the newspaper and I'm like no like not yet and they're like the ones that were like like sort of convinced me to like yeah put in for it and I'm like so happy that I did because the outreach and the community around here has been excellent and it's been so great and welcoming and I'm just like I'm glad it's something like this that's not bringing me back into the job but like making me super excited about the job well I think obviously your resume speaks for itself not to say that they shouldn't have you know open their arms to you they should do that regardless but because of the resume that you have like if anybody is going to replace Ken and what he was able to do at Seymour for for what was many, many years, not to make him sound old, but for what he was able to do, right? I mean, your pedigree fits it perfectly, especially now with what high school and what really kind of what kids of, well, I mean, we're almost in 2025, but still technically we're yeah. in 2024. But with what athletes are today are much different than what they were, and it's crazy to say this, but even before COVID, even mm-hmm. 10 years ago when I graduated high school at that time, or even 15 years ago, 20 years ago, like it, it's crazy to say that, but it's, it's the truth. Yeah. The accessibility to the information and the coaches and all of that is just insane. Like mm-hmm. I just even look back and like, I just can't even believe the way that kids get recruited now, just like just by video half the time. Yeah. And it's, it's just so easily accessed and there's just so much information. Do you feel like some of your college stuff, not to, not to reveal all of your secrets, cause I'm sure you're going to utilize that while coaching. Do you feel like that can kind of, you know, give you a head start as far as with, with some of the high school stuff, trying to get to know the kids, having them buy in. And I also know too, have, having the out of, out of season conditioning or practices does help. And I think it fits yeah. so perfectly like you. What says you? Um, I think that it's like, I definitely know how to like set it up. Mm-hmm. I know how to bring the right information. It's like leading the horse to water kind of thing. Like I've got, I've worked for three different schools, every division. I've coached in every division or played in every division. So like mm-hmm. I've had the experiences and all the information I put it all together and it's, if they want to come drink from the well, they come drink from the well. And I think if we do, we're going to have a great season. It's going to be a great year. These kids, they're all returners. They're all great from everything I've heard. People speak so highly of them. So I'm just hoping that together they mesh together and everything. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything without them. So I just hope my information that I'm bringing them, they believe and they want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And then we could all just do this together and go all the way to the end. So thinking about kind of so uh, I try to watch softball as much as I can when it's on ESPN. Baseball is my first love. I could talk baseball forever. And I've noticed with baseball, especially with my team in New York, not the Mets, but the Yankees, 
they love to drop their shoulder and think a home run's going to win every time. A lot of strikeouts. They have no approach of the plate, right? Yeah. And I've noticed that not so much the approach of the plate, because I still see that at the high school side for both sides, softball and baseball. But I have noticed that there's more of the dropping the shoulder, trying to go for the downs, drive the ball, put the ball in the air, go for that. Is that something that is a part of your thinking when it comes to hitting or what's that like? Um, I definitely am like a, let's get as many base hits as possible. We're going to string them together. We're going to create an offense. We're going to start moving things. We're going to make stuff happen. Like you're not going to be able to hit a home run every time up at bat. Like mm -hmm. you watch the world series, the best, the best home run hitter in the league hit one yep. in eight games, 12, 12 yep. games, something like that. He didn't do great. So the fact that a, any girl or any high school player is going to go out there and think they're going to outdo Aaron Judge is outrageous. So yeah. I think that they just need to ha – we have to have really good approaches. We have to have really good at-bats. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing that, things are going to happen. And if things are not happening, we're going to have to start making things happen. So it's yeah. all about creating some type of momentum and keeping that up. But base hits are better than anything. Walks mm -hmm. are still great. You're still on base. I don't care. I'm on base do it all <laughs> well it's almost like too being able to force the defense to make plays and just watch because again these are high school kids obviously some can handle the pressure some can't some can play defense some can't so the only way you're going to find out is by testing it and if you strike right. out the only thing you're testing is if the catcher can catch the ball right or you hit a long fly ball and that's still one of the easiest outs in the game except for Aaron Judge <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> still bothers me that fifth inning Still gives me yeah. night. I think it was on Halloween. Yeah. Maybe it was before. Still, <laughs> I think it was the night before. <laughs> that was the night before. Still bad. Yeah. So kind of looking at it from a perspective, looking at it from the Seymour side, right? I mean, you were talking about the community and such. Have have you had an opportunity to be able to talk to now? I don't know how many kids are playing other sports in the fall, so I know it may be a little bit difficult, but have you been able to sit down with some or many and just kind of introduce yourself and I just said, hey, this is who I am, and let's get to work. We have our first um, introduction meeting, I want to call it, I guess, like little snippet on Monday. And I've met, like, I'd say two of them in passing. Nice. But I've met a lot of their siblings because they're all at the middle school. So I've met family members, but I haven't met them. And we're all very excited to meet each other. And we're hoping that it all goes really good. <laughs> Which it should. I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, what yeah. are you thinking about as far as like what's going through your head is with that coming up? Are you nervous? Are you anxious? Both? Yeah. I mean, I'm meeting a whole group of like 16, 17, and 18 year old girls who I'm the holder of their next season. Like, I mean, it's up to them, but like I'm the one that's they think is in control of it even though they're really in control of it but yeah. i'm the one at the steering wheel so like yeah i'm a little nervous i'm a little nervous just to like get going i think once it gets going it'll just take itself and just run with it but i think that like the initial like here's how we're doing things yeah i don't think i'll get any pushback i think it's just going to be like oh we're doing it this way like it's it's new like everybody has like get their feet wet type of vibe Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that 100%. And another part, too, is the competitiveness that you have. You and I were just talking about a couple of softball coaches, one who had resigned, one who's still coaching and dominating down at Massick and Lee Barone. Um, does it kind of get the juices flowing? Because people, regardless, even though Seymour has not won a title in a little bit, people still want to face Seymour when it comes to softball. Yeah. They want to be the team, although Woodland in the Valley has had a great run fantastic run people still mm -hmm. want to face seymour they want to go yeah. against dog attack right they want to make sure they beat those teams because then they could say we beat you right and woodland has done yeah. it the last couple of years but at the end of the day you know that competitiveness is always awesome so for you knowing the coaches in connecticut right are you looking forward to facing maybe those coaches one day down the road i mean some of them are still there from when i played so yeah it would be nice to go out there and coach against them and win it would be great. That's a wonderful feeling to be like, I watched you beat me as a player. Now I would love to beat you as a coach type of thing. 
Mm-hmm. I love the the feeling of like the back and forth. Like I love that Seymour has good competitors in their conference and like people still want to come out there and compete with us. And I think that like the girls are we're gonna be ready for that stuff. I think we're gonna be prepared to like mm-hmm. want people to come play us and like, like hold that standard up there. I can tell you people come when it when it comes time to the tournament for softball, people show up. They come down in yeah. August. They go to the games, and I think that's awesome because softball to me is one of those sports where, again, because of where it falls and obviously there's other sports that get attention, I feel like it should garner more, and I feel like it's starting to grow as a sport. I think what Oklahoma has done for softball at the college level has helped kind of expand that. Obviously, social media helps. Obviously, there's other factors too. I think the sport is continuously growing, and I think that's great, honestly. Yeah, it's a great sport to watch, especially high school. It's only one game. It's yeah. like what two, three hours max, and it's quick and it's moving and it's yeah. it's nothing like watching. No offense, like the three, four hour baseball every once in a while, but it gets going. If it's a good game, it's a good game, and it's moving and it's quick and it's a good time. We well, you know what it is in softball. You get maybe one or two pitching changes in baseball, even with <laughs> yeah. the clock. You got well. If Aaron Boone's your manager, you're gonna have eight pitching changes in a game, right? So exactly. That's why it's gonna take five hours, six hours, whatever it's gonna be. You know, mm-hmm. Coach, I really appreciate you coming on. Before I let you go, really quick, um, heading into the new year, right? Obviously, softball will be here before you know it. Things are gonna start ramping up and moving. Um, have you started to lay out your kind of like plan as far as with this team? Obviously, I know you're meeting them on Monday. But do you have any sort of plan or anything like that early on? Oh, uh, yeah. I have a couple of things that we're going to start with. Okay. I got a big list of rules for them coming. I got a team oh. goals list. We Ooh, got rules. Oof. like priorities. We got all kinds of stuff. We're going to have a big team meeting. They're going to be well prepared. <laughs> I can imagine. Are the rules from the college side? Because that could be rough. They're from both. They're from both. Okay. They're a good mix. My assistant looked at them and he said that this was where we needed the right direction. So okay. we're gonna we're gonna hold them to the standard that Seymour has out there and we're gonna keep it up. Is one of them turn the phones off after a certain it, time? Yeah, and if I see it, it's going in a pocket. In a pocket. My. I'm surprised it's not going in a box, <laughs> like a it, one of those lock I'll boxes. have a yeah, I'll put a little compound bucket out there. You can slide it right in the lid, it won't come back out. Woof. Yeah, see, kids kids in their phones <laughs> nowadays, they love them. You know that. Yeah, but that'll definitely be on the list. Don't worry. <laughs> that, that, I'm telling you, if anything, that will perk their ears up more than anything. Hey, I don't yeah. want to see it. And if I see it, we're taking it for the day. <laughs> Jeez. Coach, I appreciate you coming on. Best of luck as far as with everything coming. And hopefully with the new year, Salpa will be here before you know it. And hopefully I'll see you guys down the road at some point. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Always. The wrap things up here in the CT Sports Talent Show. As next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. Enjoy to find them all. Enjoy the show day, everybody, and be well.